Hey, mortgage coach community, Dave Savage here. And today I am interviewing a next gen loan officer, Mr. Mike Stone. What's up, Mike? How you doing, Dave? Good to see good you. Good. Thanks good. for having me. Yeah, good to have you. So by the way, has anybody ever called you Mr. Mike Stone? You know? No, no, it hadn't <laughs> happened yet. I think I'm too young. I've got too much of a baby face for that. I know, I know, but that's kind of why I did it, just to throw it out there. Yeah. So, um, so everybody, Mike is, you're in Denver, Colorado, right? Correct. Yeah. So you're a, you're a big Raider fan. Big big. Oh, Raider. huge! Actually, Cowboys. No, I'm uh, Texas born and raised, and uh, Dallas Cowboys is my team. Uh, I was kidding. I was born in Denver. I didn't tell you that, but I'm a Broncos oh, fan. Nice. But, but I I respect the Cowboys. I mean, I can not a big Raider fan, you know. But uh, sure. yeah. All, all, all football jokes aside. So, so how long have you been using Mortgage Coach and how long have you been part of our community? I've been using Mortgage Coach really since I started originating, probably about three and a half, four years ago. Now, when, when you and I were doing our, our pre-talk, it sounds like you, you, you've been in the business for longer and you've been a loan officer for three years. What did you do your first couple of years of the business? Yeah. So I was a processor and transaction manager uh, for a top producer here at our company. Uh, so did that for a couple of years, great experience and exposure on the process, managing people and uh, taking, providing a great client experience from application through closing. You know, I, I do want to get into some of your, you know, strategies for today and just you as a success story. But I, I know I get reach outs all the time from new loan officers or people that are like wanting to get in the business. I mean, what is your take on should they come in and be a member of a team? Or should they come in and try to just figure it out in their first year? I mean, what's your advice to any new loan officers thinking about mortgage business right now? I mean, I think, you know, part of my success is definitely from that experience and from the mentors I've had. Uh, you know, loans aren't rocket science, but every loan is different. They are complicated. Things come up. And so I think um, getting at bats and getting a lot of exposure early on uh, and learning, you know, when it's not necessarily your deal, I think is was hugely valuable for me. Maybe there's there's some people I'm not necessarily a natural salesperson. I'm a very technical person, analytical person. So it could also just be my personality that, that was the best route for me to go. Um, that's kind of my general thought, though. I mean, I think it's you got to have a, a trainer, a coach, or a mentor, though, uh, if you want to be successful for sure. Yeah. Well, we, we I think mandate if you're in your first two years in the business and you don't have a great mentor, you need one. Um, I do lean towards, you know, starting off on a team because you said it, you could get, you know, 50 to 100 loans under your belt in your first year if you're on the right team. And in two yeah. years, you can get hundreds of loans under your belt. So you come to the, you come to the market, not just learning how to sell, but you come to the market knowing how to solve problems and do loans. So I, I don't know, I like Absolutely. that strategy. Yeah, and I think it also, you know, the big thing too is even if you are in more of an operations role, but you have aspirations to be a loan officer, I think um, acting like a loan officer from day one and, you know, maybe the day job is processing the loan or, or managing the transaction, but going to networking events, doing some of these other things um, to, to hone that sales skill too and find, find clients of your own. I mean, you got to start that early too. Yeah, no, no doubt. So walk us through your, your practice. You've been doing this three, going on four years, it sounds like. Uh, how many loans did you do and what was your production last year? So last year, I uh, did 89 loans, 27 million in total volume. Um, 2016 was a little better, I'll admit. 120 loans and 36 million wow. in total volume. Um, so yeah, definitely, but you know, keeping my head down, pedal to the metal, you know, want to continue to grow and didn't like necessarily, um, you know, I mean, could have been the market, whatever, whatever I want to make the excuse, you know, but, you know, definitely didn't like taking a, a backward step as, as opposed to going forward. No doubt. What, what's the goal for this year and how are you doing so far in 2018? 120 to 150 would be the goal. Um, you know, slow start in January, February for me. So a little behind that, but now back ramped up to, eight to 10 loans a month, it looks like here for um, March and April. Uh, and just, just once again, looking to catch my stride and get that to 10 to 12 to 15 consistently. 
Love it. Well, first of all, you are an incredible success story to be on mm-hmm. your, you know, fourth year business and to be doing that type of volume is is exceptional. I mean, congrats on a just a great start to your career in the mortgage industry. You know, you can Thanks go so. anywhere at this point. So, so why mortgage coach? You know, why did you adopt it early on? You know, why do you use it today? And then let's get into some strategies and ideas on, you know, how you use it and just some other other stuff. Yeah. Yeah. For me, I think what resonated most was I I come from a finance background. I'm a big numbers guy. And, uh, you know, if I'm going to be making claims with clients as to why I think this strategy is better better over another one, I want to make sure that I'm backing it up with concrete information. And uh, I think that's what Mortgage Coach Coach provides is just really um, clean, slick technology in in an easy to read format for consumers when you know they might not necessarily know the ins and outs of mortgages like we do but they can understand okay this is how much it's going to cost me over five years these two scenarios and um you know a lot of times it makes a pretty clear cut uh you know answer as to their best strategy and so i like once again not being a salesperson uh just at heart i think that helps me out quite a bit by really serving before i sell and and providing great valuable information um, for both of us to make the decision together. And, and how, what, you know, who are most of your realtors and families? Are there any common themes in the type of realtors and clients that you work with? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm 29 and uh, I would definitely say the majority of my clientele, whether it is my referral partners or my cl- actual clients, I would say are around similar demographics, late twenties, um, early thirties or just in their thirties, I would say. Uh, probably about the 75% or so, I would say, is kind of of that uh, millennial generation or, you know, whatever it is, generation X, generation Y, I can't remember. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. No, but I, I have to imagine when it comes to realtors, the people that are newer in the business, but they're hard chargers and having success is someone that you would be attracted to and someone that would be attracted to doing business with you. And then, you know, the other thing that, you know, it didn't surprise me, but I don't, I don't know, I don't know how you stack up in the market. The fact that you're meeting with most of your clients in person, so you're, you really are epitomizing that referral-based local lender that's delivering this high-touch experience, but you're also using technology really well. So, what, what percentage of your families are coming into your office? And then I just want to, you know, kind of walk through what that looks like and how you're, you're delivering that personal experience and yet that automated experience yep yeah i meet with 95 percent of my clients maybe even higher the only ones that i might not meet with are the out-of-staters um you know so it is very personal Uh, i'm very big about the belly to belly uh kind of relationships and not only meeting in person but also potentially at the point of signing their application package when going under contract at closing Uh, i do think that that having that personal relationship is going is going to be the foundation for driving massive referrals and repeat clients in the future. Now I hear all the time that loan officers, you know, one can get people to come into the office or, you know, they don't have time. And by the way, let's face it, 70% of loan officers do less than 60 loans a year. So here you are pretty new in the business. You also have kind of niched yourself as, Hey, I'm working with the next gen agents and the you know first time home buyers but yet you're closing you know on average 100 loans a year and you're doing this high tech experience so what do you what are you saying that's different than what other loan officers are saying to get people in your office and how do you think you're successful at that strategy when a lot of people aren't you know i'm not really sure honestly i don't know that i'm necessarily saying anything different i more so think that maybe a lot of loan officers aren't necessarily pushing for it i mean fortunately here in denver geographic like geographically, you know, it works pretty well. Denver is Denver is kind of a small, big city, I'd say. So it's easy for people to get across town and, and, you know, for me to meet them in the middle, if that works. I think it's just about managing time well and managing the calendar well uh, is what it comes down to for me. Um, not being afraid to ask, you know, the right question. Instead of do you want to meet here to go over your options or would you rather schedule a call, you know, present it from the get-go that, hey, we are going to meet and uh, go through these options. That's a big part of my process and the way I deliver the most value and, and consumer experience. 
And uh, so when is, when in the coming days can we do that? You know, and most of the time they just give me the date, we plug it in the calendar. They're fine with coming into the office. You know, I just, I don't, I guess I don't really give them many options to say no, I suppose. Um, Got it. So it's very, it's very assumptive. How, how do you integrate mortgage coach into the front end experience? I want to, I want to make sure we really pull that out. And, yeah. and I also wonder how you in office deliver the total cost analysis. So could you give a feel for that? Absolutely. So I, my approach is really when I'm sitting down in person, you know, I, I kind of start with explaining the variables uh, of mortgages, your interest rates, uh, mortgage insurance, closing costs. And then really what that culminates to is the mortgage coach presentation. And I say it all the time to clients, like this is my favorite part of the meeting. Um, you know, in reference to my numbers background and just, you know, hey, this is, is really where we can tailor the loan to be specific to you. Um, and I, I guess I don't make assumptions when I am stru structuring their loan and, and showing them these strategies. I get people all the time who say, hey, I, I do want to put 20% down or, you know, I've got 20,000 to put down. I'll still show them different down payment options, different ways of, of paying out mortgage insurance. Uh, just to show them, you know, because they don't know if they don't know. Um, and and I think that they get a lot of value and they might think they want to put 20% down, but kind of coming from that financial background, you know, there's opportunity costs, there's trade-offs with everything. So is that really the right decision? And this is a way for us to quantify and help you decide or us decide together is what is really our best strategy. So I think that's what it comes down to and definitely something that differentiates me. Um, where I feel like a lot of my peers, you know, here's your pre-approval letter, go out and find a home, come back to us when you do. So being much more collaborative, not only there on the front end, you know, I tell them all the time too, give me some homework. How can I, how can I tweak this? What else can I provide? And then, you know, 15 minutes after our meeting, I'm firing off another mortgage coach presentation, showing them some other breakdowns or other purchase price points and no one else, you know, once again, I just, I, the vast majority of my peers in the industry are not doing that. Yeah, no, no doubt. And what is your um, conversion rate? You know, what percentage of the families that, you know, get referred to you that want a loan, come meet with you, actually go with you? And how often do you lose to other lenders? Knock on wood, you know, I, I do think my conversion rate is really, really high. I, as far as the number, it's hard um, to necessarily put a specific number on it because I meet with plenty of people that just don't and ultimately end up buying a home at all. Um, you know, we we're in a very, I think, as a lot of cities are right now, very competitive markets and people just get discouraged. So we meet, I take the time, uh, but ultimately they might not end up uh, closing or it's, you know, six months or a year later. I really think though, and being a younger guy, I know I get shopped too. I think my conversion rate is high though. I mean, 70% or higher, maybe 80 and 90%, I would say. Uh, I don't feel, I feel like I don't let a whole lot of deals slip away. And I think it is because of the information that I provide and just how much care and time I put into meeting with them in person, exploring various options that they're not getting elsewhere. And, um, you know, just kind of the whole shebang. Yeah, well, I think anyone could get value from you, whether you're, you know, not the next gen loan officer, you know, here's a guy that's new in the business, that's doing a hundred ish loans a year, meeting people in person and killing it. And if you are a next gen loan officer, you know, meeting people in, and I'm not here to advocate for that. Although I did my interview with Todd Duncan and he talked about how important trust is. And you're seeing, I think a movement to loan officers that are referral based local lenders leveraging that because yeah. you know, let's face it, tech lenders are, are here. And more of them are coming into town. And if you do want to differentiate, you know, the fact that you're local, the fact that you're a human being, um, leverage that you're local, you're a human being, and you have to leverage technology to get to the next level. So what, what's your take? Any advice you have as you wrap this up? Because, you know, one of the reasons why I do these interviews is I think that loan officers get ideas and they get scripts, mm -hmm. but they also get inspiration and motivation because I am the mortgage page guy. But what advice do you have to loan officers that, you know, they're, they're not using mortgage coach and the total cost analysis, you know, what, what words of wisdom do you have as to, you know, why they should and how they should? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think what it's coming down to is it's, it's becoming our industries, unfortunately, 
um, are just becoming so commoditized. You know, like I said, there are probably 10,000 lenders or so here in the area. How do you differentiate yourself from those people um, where it's not just strictly based on rate? You know, I think that's what we're all trying to avoid as well is, yeah, we know people are going to shop. We know realtors might be giving out a couple of names. Um, this is really how you differentiate and, you know, by offering tools and substance and guidance um, like Mortgage Coach, that's how you differentiate yourself. You provide a ton of value and it gets people less concerned about their actual interest rate and whatnot. And it's not to say that, you know, I mean, you can have the best rates in the world, but if you're just dropping the ball on everything else, it doesn't really matter, you know? And so I think that's the model that we've built here. And, um, you know, I think that's, it's definitely going to result in a long-term, like I said, foundation and relationship driven business. Yeah. Well, thank you for that. And one last question, when you think of the mortgage coach advantage, you know, how much do you think it improves your conversion rate? You know, if you had to put a, you know, a percentage on it or a thought on it, how much do you think the fact that you're delivering a total cost analysis is enhancing, you know, your, your success rate and your overall value? Yeah. Like I said, I give it to everyone. So I think it's huge. I mean, I, I, I don't meet with someone and not have a um, mortgage coach presentation at hand. So, you know, while, while other lenders are just talking about rates and fees, and then I come in with this, this other piece of the presentation that makes them think a little bit differently. Yeah. I mean, it's hard to quantify what that, how, how drastically that improves my conversion, but I guarantee you it's, it's very substantial. Cool. Well, Hey Mike, I really appreciate this. If you're watching this and you got value from it, give us a like, let us know you got value, share it with your mortgage friends. And uh, Mike Stone, I'm looking forward to interviewing you um, later in the year, next year when you're hitting 130, 150, whatever, whatever your goal is, I'm looking forward to following your story. And uh, please, you know, be active in our community. Hopefully you subscribe to the Mortgage Coach Productivity Mastermind Group. If you have questions, or if you have comments to other loan officers, uh, be sure to engage because you've got just a spectacular career ahead, bro. Cool. Thanks, Dave. All right. Take it easy, man. See ya.